Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, attending this session. Uh, I would actually uh, like to, to mention something before we get started. Uh, I do not mind being uh, asked questions during the presentation. I actually, for those who know, who know me, I like to be uh, presenting very interactively. So feel free to interrupt me, uh, whatever you, you prefer, either by a chat or uh, on the mic. Uh, and I'll answer your questions. So uh, as mentioned already, uh, the talk is about Sleep ECI. Uh, PR stands for base container image. And let's see what this is all about. So uh, the work around Sleep ECI started uh, quite some time ago, and it was mostly like um, an idea driven by a few uh, distinguished engineers, um, mostly myself, uh, Dirk Miller and Olaf Kish. Uh, and that was mostly done around the development language tags and caveats around repositories and uh, packages. Uh, and and uh, basically the, the, the idea we had in mind was to, to help uh, developers, um, all type of developers, uh, to to have a friendly ecosystem uh, to develop software to to and to deploy the software that they uh, write. Uh, so that has evolved and that has moved to more uh, product type um, release, uh, making making also BCI much closer towards the uh, what the Lee work is, and so. With that in mind, we basically wanted to create a flexible developer experience uh, to provide a full integrated uh, development uh, language ecosystem. In fact, you can imagine uh, Python, Ruby, Perl, uh, Java, .NET, and so on, Go, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that basically this environment is self-contained uh, and developers can use that uh, both for development purposes, but also uh, as we will see in a specific use case, to eventually deploy what they have uh, developed. So we did have, uh, and this this is back uh, around the May time frame. We did have a very short term demand uh, with a with an according uh, deliverable, uh, and that was basically. Uh, to offer a base container image uh, with all the recommended security and hardened, uh, you know, uh, fixes, uh, and but with one big constraint to have a, a, de a developer focused repository, uh, and this developer friendly repository had to be freely freely available for people. Uh, this means that. For anybody of you who's familiar with um, what a less container image was before, uh, which came uh, with no repository pre-configured, and you were required to have a subscription in order to basically access the full universe of uh, less uh, packages. This time, instead, when you when you pull a, a new Sleep BCI image, uh, this comes with a, an ad hoc pre configured repository, and that's the freely available repository to developers, to users, uh, with a specific predefined set of packages. Uh, and this is important because you do not necessarily get all that you get with the uh, subscription uh, that, that less offer. But we will see this in a bit. So with that in mind, we basically uh, thought about, or we basically considered four different uh, use cases, uh, and they are very much all equally important to us. Uh, the cloud native use case, which uh, which is uh, pretty new, and um, where, where basically containers are really the, the butter and bread. Uh, this this was uh, the use case where people like Dirk. 
uh, Dirk Mueller, like uh, Fabio Castelli and Matt Farina helped us tremendously in both shaping the requirements aspect of, of things, but also with uh, testing and providing us with feedback as we were developing the, the, the container image. And in this use case, you could actually imagine a, a situation where your container image starts from day zero in the development life cycles and a slightly modified version of that container eventually ends up in, in a production system. Uh, these two different container images are pretty much one is a is a is a fatter one, which is the development uh, ecosystem the environment with all the tools and, and and maybe the SDKs. If you consider Java, for example, the Java SDK was the Java runtime, um, and and all those um, yeah uh, tools and and tool chains that developers use in their specific ecosystem those not necessarily have to basically uh, exist in the final uh, deployed uh, container image. And so we, we were uh, calling this the, the, the fatter container versus the, the more slim runtime minimal container. Uh, and actually, this use case helped us all, all along with one specific container image, which is the minimal container image that we have uh, come up with. The second use case uh, is the enterprise use case. Uh, and this is something that is very close to our art with, uh, with SLES. However, when we, we, we talk about containers and when we talk about you know, the, 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 the new container world and, and what enterprises are doing in this space when, for example, considering the migration from a virtualized workload to a containerized workload, uh, well, things are, are still not too clear about what people for AC to be, to, to be doing in, in the very near future. Uh, we did get some first glimpses from some of our customers and partners, but um, we all believe that it's a way, a long way to go before we, we can really come up with a final answer to, to the requirements list. And one important though, one, one important lesson learned though from from uh, you know listening to to the customers and partners and in looking into the enterprise use case is that we did realize we cannot uh, really look at what we have done so far learn from our past but we rather have to to have a new dialogue with new people even in the same company even the same uh, customer premises that we used to to talk already with people we need to to, to basically see the new world and see see this new world with new eyes. Then the third use case is the traditional ISV use case. Uh, we basically uh, want to, to, to ensure that we can provide an interesting option uh, for all the ISV developers to, to basically build their application as container images. Uh, and again, with a very high degree of freedom in how they build and distribute these images. Uh, it's it it is it has like come up uh, very often uh, uh, the, the the fact that you know once a, a an ISV chose a specific uh, container image vehicle, it, it's actually much harder for them to migrate later on to, to a new a, a new image, uh, and this is because there are uh, several costs associated uh, with the development that they do with the, the tools that they use and, and have the containers uh, all along in their development life cycles. So once they pick and choose a, a solution, it's very hard to, to then later on migrate. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is also very challenging for us. So it means that, to, that probably you need to look at the new people, the, the, the new use cases uh, in, this, in this place. Uh, and again, Something that we would like to really try and do in this uh, in this in this space is to 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 have the OS part of an image in a manner like uh, buildpacks.io. So basically, ensuring that things can be stripped out when uh, when necessary. The final use case, uh, last but not least, is the Rancher use case. Actually, Rancher has driven uh, a considerable considerable amount of the requirements that we currently 
have delivered through through the PCI uh, effort, and this includes the free redistribution to ISVs. Uh, basically, any ISV should be able to build uh, their images with PCI and distribute them uh, as they say. Um, and again, very important is the is the aspect of FIP certification. So. Uh, the end user should be able to run our container-based image in a FIPS-enforced uh, environment, and the image obviously should should just work work just as fine. Uh, the the subset of social Linux enterprise that we also offer is mostly driven by by the need uh, of our uh, Ranger colleagues. Um, the, the first uh, the first thing that we actually managed to 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 achieve uh, with sleepbci was to build ranger 2.6 for example uh, and the need again of the the number the, the 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 packages that we ship in our free freely available repository is also very much driven uh, from this use case so again it's the last one mentioned here but it's actually has been our first uh, real customer and end user and uh, requirement uh, driver for for these efforts, and it was actually great to to collaborate with them and getting their input and help. So, the state of the art is that we are actually uh, have again a SLBCI repository. We have uh, this freely available repository. Um, and one of the caveats around this is that uh, we'll only contain up to 50% of what the total slash, slash repositories um, provide. Uh, I'm not now entirely sure uh, where we are in this proportion, uh, but uh, certainly below the, this threshold. We do have the freely redistributable container image with this LBCR repository pre-configured, but uh, interestingly, uh, if anybody using our SleepBCI uh, free repository also has uh, available like a, a SLE, CSS less credentials, then these credentials can still be pushed, can still be used by the SleepBCI uh, image, uh, which then basically grant access to the full universe of this less repository. Uh, and this is actually an important aspect of our image, which can basically help people just you know develop freely, have this image uh, for testing, for trying purposes, uh, play with it uh, with zero cost, and obviously when they need to move to a, a production grade uh, deployment, then they can just you know have a slash credential and push this through 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 the uh, image and have access again to our support and our repositories and so on and so forth. And again, uh, the, the the image uh, and the, the container uh, has a, a fully, is fully FIPS compliance uh, only when the container image has or basically runs with a paid subscription. So this is, this is, uh, this is pretty important to note. So the image itself will keep running on an FIPS enabled host so on a, on a host that is enforcing uh, FIPS, but for a customer, for an end user to claim uh, FIPS compliance, then he or she will actually have to have a paid subscription with us. What are the next steps? Uh, well, so as I said, Rancher 2.6 uh, has already been migrated onto SleepBCI, uh, but there are many more other projects in the pipeline, uh, like, uh, like Alistair Opney, uh, is, the, is the, no, I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrongly, uh, they're all uh, part of the, the project that we are, that basically Ranger is, is planning to migrate to SleepBCI. Uh, and as far as I uh, am aware, um, there, are, there, there will be others as well. So. This is great to see. Uh, we do have uh, some POC ongoing with some of our customers around .NET uh, container images that we provide, and we are basically looking forward to receive feedback from them. Although the first 
uh, the first feedback that we received were, were pretty much very positive. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm pretty positive about it. Something that is ongoing, and uh, for these specific efforts, I really want to say a big fat thank you to Dan Cermak and Jose uh, Lasuc. Um, we are developing a very strong testing pipeline uh, as a gating uh, to the publishing of new images. And when I say new images, not just something brand new that we did not have before, but also a new image that is basically receiving, for example, uh, upgrades uh, after a new uh, report, repository has been published, or, you know, uh, we are just, uh, for example, changing some uh, bits and pieces in the way that our images uh, are, um, are put together. So this getting, uh, this getting um, testing pipeline is extremely important for us. So to basically have the same level of uh, uh, confidence in our container images as we do today with our slice uh, image. And again, we are currently working on the documentation, messaging, uh, sales enablement, and, and the final pricing of, of the various different approaches and solutions. So this is ongoing. What do we really have so far? Well, we have a base container image, uh, which is, uh, you know, not too far off from what the slice uh, image, the content image was before, uh, besides, you know, the fact that we are now, for example, providing the uh, uh, freely available repository pre-configured on the image itself. And this uh, adds up to 160 megabytes roughly of an uncompressed size. Uh, we do have uh, a minimal container image, which as I said earlier on, uh, was uh, was born thanks to the help of many. And this image uh, basically contains no zipper, uh, but uh, it has uh, basically glibc, uh, bash, and rpm, and it's up to 41 point something megabyte. We also have a micro container image, which has no zipper, no RPM, and only provides uh, RPM DB for um, security scanning, uh, etc. And this is roughly 24 megabytes. And we have a series of um, language-specific container images. And we have, for example, uh, Go 116. And I heard just today that we managed to get also Go 117. We have uh, Java, both the runtime and development uh, environment as separate containers images. We have Rust, Python, and .NET container uh, image as well. Again, the, not, the .NET container image, uh, they come as separate in the sense of the SDK and the runtime only. Uh, something that I'm also very pleased to, to, to tell you is just uh, super fresh news of a few minutes ago. All these containers have been published on the registry SUSECOM, literally as of 5 o'clock. Uh, and so they can be accessed by any of you and by any other person or end user who would like to play with it. Uh, last but not least, we also have an init container image uh, for those who are in need of, for example, starting a, a, an application or a daemon via, via, via service, by systemd, for example. It's not very cloud native, but there are a lot of those traditional enterprise uh, end users doing that. Next, so in case you want to know more uh, about uh, what uh, what out there and what we're doing and what we will be doing in the near future, well, you can visit our conference page. Uh, you can see our first adoption uh, of SLEEBCI. You can join our Slack channel uh, or you can contact any of the core team uh, people that have worked actively on, uh, on SLEEBCI so far and a big thanks to all of them. Uh, also, I would really like to, to thank uh, the security, the maintenance, and auto build team uh, for their tremendous help throughout uh, the past few weeks uh, between you know the mid of 
pretty much anything from our side to, to get the images published, tested, uh, and built uh, with our standard tools. So thank you very much, guys. And with that, I am finished. So it's, we have plenty of time for questions. Okay, so Vincent, so you saw this. Sorry. So the name is indeed SLEBCI, uh, and I'm sorry if the title of the of the of the talk does not align with what we have been talking about. I don't know if you had different expectations or if just pointing out the fact that it's it's wrong. Um, I hope you found the talk anyway interesting. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments? One thing I would really like uh, to, 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 to say, right, uh, this is pretty new effort and we are and we are doing a lot of uh, of uh, work uh, day by day and changing many different things. So it would be extremely helpful to receive your feedback uh, about the images, about uh, any issue that you see with those, um, some some specific use case that you are, for example, playing with or have in mind. Um, you know, if you just tried it out, it's at the, at the end of the day, it's just a Docker pool and a run or pod button pool and run, uh, it would be extremely helpful for us to receive your, your input. How are the repositories separated from a technical perspective? Okay, so basically the, the uh, BCI repository is actually populated with what is part of this last repository. So uh, when something lands on the on the official uh, slash repository, if that same something also is part of our PCI repository, pretty much the same package is offered through the, the freely available repository itself. Uh, and again, this also means that we get in the free available repository all those bug fixes, CV fixes, upgrades. Uh, that uh, they, that go through maintenance, so you know people can can really have an enterprise grade ecosystem, though being free. Ah, one son, this is a great question uh, because I have just had a conversation with uh, with Nicole uh, a week ago when we were uh, at the offsite. So. Uh, we just need to to simply have a little bit of comms around uh, around it. Oh, sorry, uh, Andrea. So Vincent Mutasami is asking, uh, when will we plan to update Legacy Susacom with SkillBCI? I mean, the web page, not the real uh, registry. Yes. So. The front end page needs update and needs a lot of love. Uh, we are very much aware of it. And in fact, it's something that is being captured under documentation. Uh, we just need a little bit of a, of a final uh, undust for, for, from, from, uh, from, from, the, from the communication perspective. And I think that we are pretty much done in terms of how to approach the, the update of the front page. So it's 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 coming. It's a, it's a very valid point, and yes, I totally agree and understand the need of it. Uh, another question: How often are the BCI images be rebuilt with the new packages? Sorry, uh, uh, I don't think that I I fully get the question. If I may, Marco. Yes. Um, 
for uh, for game question so the images are rebuilt as soon as there are maintenance updates uh, released um, and we are uh, working to plug that with our QA pipeline to make sure they are tested and once they are green they will be published I hope this answers the question that's thanks uh, Frederick I just didn't didn't get the the question uh, okay so I don't see any other questions on the chat I may ask uh, uh, verbally uh, Marco uh, I didn't catch uh, uh, this uh, Images, container images, are they are built uh, like normally in build service, or uh, do they use some of the toolings that uh, Olaf uh, presented? No, so the the images are fully created through our build system, uh, and again, this is one of uh, of the the nice uh, aspect of CI, if you wish. They are actually created through our Cisco Software Supply Chain as well. Uh, in exactly the same way that we do everything else for 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 less. Mm, thanks. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hino is asking, how do the BCI differ from the other container already provided for for less? So Hino, I think that. Um, uh, this was basically what I said earlier on about the SLE BCI. If you if you consider only the ba very base container image, uh, is not too far off from what uh, this last 15, for example, SP2 container image was. The difference here is that when you were pulling that image before, you were getting no repository unless you uh, you had a less uh, subscription right uh, what happens now with the new images even the very base container image uh, that you can pull from registry source.com if you go and, and and click on the very first uh, icon there big 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 fat icon uh, you would you would be getting a, a container image with the free BCI repository pre-configured. So you have access to, to, to various different packages which are coming from the SLES uh, ecosystem, so uh, enterprise grade, uh, without, without the need of a subscription. And again, if you have a subscription, you can still use your subscription in the container image and have full, uh, fully fledged access to, to the full uh, universe of SLES. I hope that answers the question. I see a few people are still typing. Guys, please feel free to, to, to come on my mic uh, if, if, uh, if you feel uh, more comfortable with it. So he is also asking, how is that communicated to the people? I believe this is related to what I've just said. And again, this is basically going to be part of the of various different activities. Definitely one is the front end that's sitting um, in front of the registry source com. So that will basically have to, to, to be very clear about what the new offering is about. Uh, but if that's not the only, that's the only, not the only way, and as I said at one of my slides, there are the, the, there are comms aspects and there are sales aspects and marketing aspects about this, um, which are ongoing. So just bear with us for the time being. Uh, Jose is uh, saying, okay, not a question, but a reflection from my side. Currently, the testing is challenging as we could get often new failures due to the daily changes that happen in build service project. The plan is to use the current tests for getting the release as soon as we gain more stability. Sure. 
Okay, thanks for the thanks for the uh, clarification. Uh, and yes, I mean, I, I believe that um, that it's fine that we are not a decading uh, phase yet, uh, but that eventually it's our end goal. I was seeing somebody writing and no more. Anybody else? So I have one more question. Uh, yes. When you listed the classes for containers, so one of them at the very end was init containers. Uh, you mentioned that they are not uh, cloud native or they, they don't fit into the uh, cloud native strategy. Uh, do, uh, could, do I understand correctly like that the applications, cloud native applications should be like just um, not requiring the, the system System B basically, or the rest of the system, that they should be they should be relying or they should be self-contained. Perhaps that was even uh, what you mentioned on the slides. So yeah, basically they should not rely on the system environment. Well, um, one aspect of those containers that are basically these init containers, right, is that people run. Uh, the 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 uh, yeah the operator does not want to to move a, to move away from what he she used to do on a bare metal system right it's not not so much about the the cloud native development as such but rather imagine running a service within a container uh, in the same way that you basically used to run that service outside of of the container uh, one example for example one example could be uh, when people talk about uh, Docker in Docker, right? So when you run, yeah, you run a Docker uh, service inside a Docker container, right? And that that also requires some tricks from uh, from a host perspective when you launch the container itself. Uh, but then, no matter what, you will have to basically run the service of Docker. Like the, the daemon uh, in a specific way when your when your container bootstraps, and this is the, and this is done in these init uh, style container images. Uh, similarly, like uh, I don't know if you if you if you plan to 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 to, to boot a service like Apache or any other type of service that you couldn't really do on a bare metal through the service for system D uh demon uh, you will still need this sort of uh, container image to do so yeah yeah I, I see thank you i thought that you said you had two questions Michael. Or uh, was it? <laughs> the, like this was my second question okay cool Anybody else? Well, okay, if there are no more questions, Michael, I think that we are done. Uh, again, I would like to thank you everyone attending the, the talk. Uh, please feel free to reach out to to anybody that I mentioned uh, in in the slides, I mean the slides are, are downloadable, so you can uh, you can uh, pin people uh, later on if you if you wish. Uh, but most importantly, please give this a try uh, and let us know of any troubles you see with it. Thank you.